The purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. It is no substitute for professional care by your doctor or your qualified health care professional. Never disregard or delay professional medical advice because of something you've heard on this podcast or in any linked material. Guests who speak on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Dr. Shirley neither endorses nor opposes any particular opinion discussed on this podcast. The views expressed on this podcast have no relation to those of any academic, hospital, practice, institution, or other entity with which Dr. Shirley may be affiliated. Welcome to Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty. This podcast is curated by Dr. Shirley Medea, MD, as the definitive source of holistic wellness through beauty. The Forever Fab podcast values truth and authenticity. We encourage our guests to show up exactly as they are, as the best version of themselves. Please note, this podcast episode contains adult language. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome back to part two of the Forever Fab podcast. Aisha, who are the people who inspire you today? I am inspired by anybody who enjoys leaving their comfort zone. I also am inspired by people who are breaking the mold. So like, I love Amanda Gorman at the Mm. inauguration. I am, you know, I loved Mina Harris saying, Hey, I'm I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm also going to be a point of light. I'm going to be an activist, right? Like I I love all of these women like Issa Rae who are just own yes, yes. What they have to contribute in the field and and demanding to be respected for it. I agree 100%. And I love surrounding myself with those types of women, with those types of people because actually it helps me to be better and to do better. 100%. Now, that's another like that's a like a highlight of this podcast, right? Is if you are not surrounded by people who inspire you or motivate you, your life is your own masterpiece. You can edit it ruthlessly, upgrade your lineup, right? Find yep. those people who want to hold intention and who cheer for you as loudly as you cheer for yourself. I agree 100%. I have um, often mentioned this saying that my mother used to tell me when I was a little kid, and um, she would tell me in French, and it's Dis-moi qui tu en, je te dirai qui tu es. So basically, the translation is Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. And it took me a while to really understand that because I thought, oh, is she telling me to hang out with you know good people on good behavior? <laughs> Maybe that's what she meant. But I think what it really means is to surround yourself with people who you admire and whose behaviors or values who you may not necessarily want to emulate, but who help to uplift not only you, but others. And each time I think of that, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so true. And you just echoed it again with what you just said. So thank you. How do you define style? And what influences your style? Wow. How do I define style? It's, I feel like style is an expression of self. Yeah, and I love that. It's unmistakable. Like when you see it, you know it. It's not so much a luxury brand or a specific accessory. It's just a way that somebody puts something together that reflects who they are. To yeah. me, like that, that's that's style. What I what I've realized is that my style is mostly uh, casual chic. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love to have a full face of makeup and you know to have my hair done. But I'm at the intersection of practical and stylish, yeah. which yeah. is just enough so that I can get out the door and be effective in my day, but taking more time so that every now and then I can drop those IG photos to remind people that I can do, you know, I can do the IG model thing too. Exactly. Engineers yes, you can. Sexy. As Doctors yes, are sexy. They are. People That's are right. Sexy. <laughs> That's right, sister. We can do it. 
Now, which designers, if uh, you know, are you wearing these days? Are are there any sort of up and coming designers that you um, really want to support, or does your sort of clothing style run the gamut from high, low, Lululemon to Valentino? I mean, how do you do your fashion? You know, it's, I like to wear things that I feel are interesting. So I really love Colt Gaia. Like all of oh, their yeah. bags to me are so interesting. And every time I buy one, someone compliments me. And it's like, hey, nice. that's that's unique. Like, Where did you get that from? Nice. I also am a Mara Hoffman fan. Yeah. I love Mara Hoffman. Just like the prints and the colors. I'm starting to get into Farm Rio for that mm-hmm. same reason. I just, I love bright and patterns and and things that make you feel alive or at least like you should be in the Caribbean or Brazil somewhere yeah I also have started to kind of take a peek into what some um, black designers are doing so there's a designer in the Caribbean his name is Theodore Eilert he's just fantastic and he does the research and he goes and he gets historic prints from like the Bahamas and you know, everything that he does is just, it's spectacular and it's so well executed. If you're looking for somebody in the Caribbean and fashion, please check out Theodore Islet. How do you spell his last name? E-Y-E-L-E-T-T. Oh, okay. So exactly as it sounds, Islet. Okay. Excellent. I will certainly check him out. Has the pandemic changed your perspective on dressing up? Um, (laughs) it has been mostly dressed down Down. (laughs) here's here's what i here's what i recognize um i am very much so into form and function meaning like if i can get an hour back in my day to be productive and make more money i will do that And I can get dressed later, right? Like if I don't have to be outside the house, well, guess what? We're going to be in Nike apparel and we're going to make it do what it do. And we'll just, you know, wait for the occasion to get dressed. Gone are the days when I feel like I need to dress up to be in a Zoom. I might do my hair and my makeup, but I don't need to be in a full suit for Zoom. And I'm okay with that. Right. I I really appreciate that you mentioned form and function, because those are the basic two tenets of plastic surgery, right? You have to have form. It's got to look beautiful, but it also has to have function. It's got to work. What's the point of having a you know beautiful reconstruction if the part doesn't work? And by the same token, obviously, there's a lot to be said for function. It's great that it works. It's life-saving, all that stuff. But oh, and plastic surgery, if it's not beautiful, it's like, I really didn't do your whole job. So thank you for mentioning form and function. I get it. Believe me. What is the one fashion accessory you cannot live without? A watch. Mm. I just, I feel naked if I don't (laughs) have a watch on or Fitbit or something. Like I just need to know what time it is. Yeah. On many levels. What time is it, Aisha? It's time to get it done. Love that. (laughs) I think for me, the one fashion accessory I cannot live without is um, probably my bracelets. So when I have to take my bracelets off before I go into the OR, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel naked. But that actually helps me to commiserate with my patient who's also naked. So I guess it's it's okay. (laughs) And do you have a self-care routine or wellness routine? And if so, what is it? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about this. So pre-pandemic, right, late 2019, I was one of those people that was like, okay, we're going to self-care, but it's going to be on planned intervals, holidays, <laughs> long weekends, whatever. Now I'm part of the self-care needs to be everyday care. Yes. Because I really feel like we've entered into this period of hyperactivity. Working from home for me has been harder than working at work. So I am very deliberate about trying to do something I enjoy every day. Now, it could be a sauna session. It could be texting a close friend. It could be taking my Zoom calls while walking around the block just so that I can be outside and I can breathe. But I really try to make a point every single day to do something 
that in some way makes me feel happy or brings me joy. Beautiful. And I like that you defined work as a simple text, because frankly, if you're not doing it for yourself and having it be all about yourself, yeah, sending a text is, can be work. Do you have, by the same token, do you have a beauty routine? And if so, what is it? What are you doing for your skincare? Okay, yes, I, yes, I do. So first of all, I absolutely love Michelle German skincare. She mm. has a sea brightening serum that I use every day. Sometimes it's twice a day, but I am addicted to sea serums, period. I just, I love them. I think that they do wonders for my skin. Yes, I'm a agreed. big fan of quarterly peels, which every quarter of the year, I will do something that's more in, um, intensive. I wouldn't say invasive, but it's a little bit more intensive. I've been doing the perfect peel. Yep. I really I really liked it because I felt as though I was able to get a lot of peeling without having to worry about hyperpigmentation. Yes. Because I'm one of those people where I'm I'm trying to fight gravity every day. I don't want to wait <laughs> yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. I, but I want to wait till I'm 40 or 50 or 60 and say, mm, you know, maybe I should do something about this. I believe in aging gracefully, and that means that I'm investing in the maintenance now. 100%. Water is huge for me. So water, collagen, a substance called athletic greens. And so I do my green powder and my collagen in the morning. I've got my hair, skin, and nails, vitamins, which, you know, there's beauty that comes from what you do topically, but there's also beauty that comes from what you do inside. And I often feel that the inside sometimes outweighs some of the stuff on the outside, but I don't know, Dr. Shirley, maybe I need to get with you because I may need to do some fixing. I don't know. <laughs> I really. Aisha, I think we lost you again. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was me. No, I, I kind of heard of the mic on her end was a little weird. It went from like regular to kind of echoey. Okay. Are you I'll sure you're still there? We almost had it too. I know, last two questions. Oh, hi. Yes. Oh, you're yeah, I don't know why the audio keeps going in and out. Do you guys oh, want to ask worry. me that beauty question again? Yeah, we're just down to the last two questions, actually. And the last one is the, okay. the Fab Five. So um, do, 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 what was that question? Oh, yeah. What was the... Okay. What is your beauty routine? Yes. Aisha, do you have a beauty routine? And if so, what is it? Absolutely. I love... C brightening serum. Um, there's a skincare line by a woman named Michelle German. She's local to DC and she's who I use, but I advocate for any C brightening serum that you can get your hands on. I also like uh, even tone pads. And so, you know, I'm always trying to make sure that I protect the skin, wear sunblock, and occasionally I may have some hyperpigmentation. And so these even tone pads really even it out for me. They not only exfoliate, but they also brighten. And then collagen, I swear by collagen, as well as a greens powder. So I take athletic greens, which is my greens powder. And last but certainly not least, I am not above icing my face. So <laughs> I will oftentimes, you know, I have the serum on, I'm moisturized, and then I will put an ice mask on top just to lighten everything, reduce inflammation, and, and keep it tight. I am a huge advocate of holistic beauty. I mean, it's a philosophy that I created many years ago, pretty much to reflect the inner and outer beauty. And that outer beauty really is a function of inner wellness amongst other things. So I, I love that you're also doing the collagen and the athletic greens. I presume you drink a lot of water. Yes, I do. At least a gallon a day. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Now, I know you mentioned vitamin C, and that is your like 
that's your it serum. Would you say that that is the one beauty product you absolutely cannot live without? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with that one because it's the one that I use at least twice a day. There are some other things that I um, I really enjoy in terms of like moisturizers, but that's that's my that's my go-to serum. Yep, I get it. It's a skin lightener. It's a skin brightener. It helps to stimulate, you know, collagen. It it's a it's it's powerful. Now, second to last question. I can't believe our time is coming to a close. This has been beyond amazing. It has been like out of this world, pun intended. If you had a baccarat, of course, crystal ball. What would you love to predict for the future, whether it's in fashion, beauty, or space? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and predict that in the not too distant future, you're gonna have humans living on the moon. And for technology, I think what you're gonna see soon is that African-American women are the largest growing group of entrepreneurs. And so I look forward to cheering on a lot of my colleagues as they introduce new businesses that help make our day-to-day -day life more inclusive. Then you know what that means. That means you and I have to get together and do this, you know, form and function app about getting the right fit for our clothes. That's it, Aisha. We've got it. <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> The last question is the Fab Five. I'm so sorry that this time is coming to a close, but I understand you've got major things to get done and to do, and hopefully you'll come back and tell us all about it on the next podcast. So the Fab Five question is, what are your top five recommendations for living a beautiful life? And I'll write these down. So my first recommendation is to let it go. Sometimes setbacks are a setup for a comeback. Mm. My second recommendation is to be intentional. Write down your goals. Tell the right people your dreams. Measure your progress. Hold yourself accountable. My third recommendation is to start a business that can solve problems that you have most people find success when they start with a problem that they've had and they work from there on out. My fourth recommendation is to fall in love with yourself. Yes. I find that your life reflects the love that you have for yourself. Absolutely. And so at each level of you, find a way to not only enjoy what you're doing, but to love the piece of yourself that was able to accomplish that goal or pursue that dream. And lastly, but certainly not least, invest in yourself early. I mean, you know, drink your water, eat your veggies, uh, take your professional development class, connect with people like Dr. Shirley, <laughs> learn from others. And um, I think that if you, if you follow those things, you'll live a fabulous life. And it sounds as if you are living a fabulous life and you are also contributing to help others live a fabulous life for that, for those things. I thank you. I look forward to hearing more great, super amazing things from and about you. I congratulate you on all of your success, on all of the boundaries you have broken, on keeping yourself in mind, on keeping others in mind, knowing that you know and knowing that you have a purpose that is far greater than anyone could have thought. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Aisha Bo, for joining us on the Forever Fab podcast. I am so grateful and excited to have had this time with you. Please come back. Thank you. Such a pleasure. If you want to decode code or know someone who does, get your kit on stemlingo.com. If you or your company are facing complex tech issues and want solutions, quote, at the speed of mission, end quote, visit stemboard.com. And if you are simply obsessed with Aisha Bo, follow her on IG at Aisha Bo. Thank you for listening to this week's Forever Fab podcast episode. Until next time, stay beautiful inside and out. 
Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty, curated by Dr. Shirley Madir, MD. Live beautifully and help make the world a more beautiful place.